Hi. Main sequence stars are stars like the Sun in that they are converting hydrogen into helium in their cores and are stable over long periods of time. The uh, main sequence stars, though, in general, will vary over a range of masses. And so the Sun at one solar mass, we use the mass of the Sun as our convenient unit. Uh, those are very much like the Sun are, and here we have a diagram showing that the core of the star uh, in, is where all of the hydrogen into fusion is taking place on the main sequence. And so um, stars like the Sun have very similar structure and as we go to higher mass stars, five or ten times the mass of the Sun, certainly the structure changes as we go to lower mass stars as well, down to a half or a tenth of the mass of the Sun. We have a uh, different structure, but we won't focus on that so much. I want to emphasize that once uh, stars hot, are hot enough to begin fusing hydrogen into helium in their cores, this is what we call the main sequence. And so by just defining the main sequence here, we can look at this process in some uh, detail. We have the protons colliding into each other in the center of the sun and all main sequence stars at high velocity and at high density and temperature. Very occasionally, the protons will stick together rather than just bouncing off like a uh, billiard ball. And uh, when they do that, a uh, new positron can be created. That is this yellow sphere here, and this, um, or sorry, the white sphere and the yellow uh, is the production of light, and then we have a neutrino coming off. So light is created, a neutrino is created, and a small particle called a positron. A positron is an anti-matter particle that is an anti-electron. And so this happens once time in the sun. It happens uh, all the time, but some place in the sun is this happening, and then another place in the sun it happens again. And these two eventually will form the helium atom. And so what happens is a deuterium is formed, and this hits a, another hydrogen atom, uh, forming a, uh, a gamma ray and actually in this thing there's no light formed the light is formed in this stage and then a helium 3 nucleus is formed once this happens twice some in the core of the Sun then these two would interact and are, and then produce a helium 4 nucleus so this has two protons and two neutrons. The neutrons are dark in each of these cases. So this is two protons and one neutron. And this is helium, and this is helium for the, the uh, more common helium that we um, are familiar with because these uh, have to interact here and produce the two hydrogen atoms again uh, in order to form the stable isotope helium-4. So we get several things out of this. We get the fact that six hydrogens become one helium and two hydrogens, which really means that the net is that four hydrogens become one helium, plus we end up with a two gamma ray photons of light, two neutrinos, and uh, the um, two protons are returned back to the, the system. So 
This occurs in the sun constantly. In fact, about 600 tons of uh, hydrogen is converted to helium every second in the sun. And this is the common property of main sequence stars. Now, uh, main sequence stars with high masses live really short lives. Stars with O and B type uh, spectral types live much shorter lives. If we can look at this a little closer here, on with an HR diagram, we can see that uh, the O type star here that has a temperature of say about 35,000 degrees and a uh, mass of about 25 times the mass of the sun is located up here on the HR diagram. So its luminosity is about 80,000 times as much as the sun. So it would be up above the 10,000 mark here. Notice this is a, loop, a log diagram. And uh, the it would spend about 3 million years on the main sequence. So consider 3 million years is a very short time for a star because it takes up to uh, 10 to 100 million years even for a planet to form. So we could imagine that there would be no planets or the planets would still be in the process of formation when this star is no longer uh, a star. And this is because it burns its fuel so very rapidly in order to be 80,000 times as bright as the sun. If we look at the other end of the spectrum, literally, in spectral class, the M stars, and these M stars are red stars, very often called red dwarfs, to, uh, to make sure that we're not thinking about the red giants, which are up here. And uh, these are much lower mass stars. They're only about half the mass of the sun and the temperature of about 4,000 degrees Kelvin. And we think of that as being, well, that's very hot, what, what we would think but cool for a star. And it appears red in the sky. And, uh, and it's about point 0.03 or 3% as luminous as the sun. So because of its low luminosity, it's conserving its fuel. It has a little bit less fuel than the sun, being that it's half of the solar mass. But since it's using its energy only 3%, the rate of the sun, it will spend longer than the sun. In fact, 200 billion years on the main sequence. So, the sun has intermediate properties. It's yellow, it's G2 is the spectral type. This is uh, the uh, surface temperature of 5,800 degrees, and it will spend about 10 billion years on the main sequence. All of the stars on the main sequence here are converting hydrogen into helium, and 90% of all stars are on the main sequence. 10% make up these other groups, including the white dwarfs, the giants, and the supergiants. And so, um, we can see that, uh, to summarize, once a star is hot enough to begin fusing hydrogen and helium into their, in their cores, at a constant rate, it's a main sequence star. Stars become main sequence stars when they stop collapsing and become stable. And this balance is called uh, between is called hydrostatic equilibrium. It's a balance between the pressure of the uh, energy forming region in the center of the star pushing. Uh, out making the uh, energy form, making the, the uh, gas hot, and then uh, providing a, a pressure outward because of the, um, the gas pressure in the star. And gravity pushing in because of the enormous 
mass of the star and the weight. And the, this balance that lasts for billions of years in the case of the sun and uh, is called hydrostatic equilibrium. Hydrostatic equilibrium. So the uh, process of this fusion of hydrogen into helium in the core of a star is the longest stage of a star's life. And because of this, 90% of the stars that we see are on the main sequence. So it's because, precisely because stars spend so much time converting hydrogen into helium, it's, that's why we see 90% of stars on the main sequence. And we often think about the terms of a star's life, the birth and the life and death of the star, uh, just because it's easy in our own terms. And so this will continue. It doesn't last forever. The main sequence does not last forever. A star remains on the main sequence until the hydrogen in the core is completely converted into helium. So the core becomes a pure helium core. And that will end the life on the main sequence.